Dean. Well, I will never forget my daughter Lizzie's second birthday. Picture this. We're at the Children's Museum in downtown Dallas in the Orange Party Room. Toddlers are everywhere. They're singing and they're dancing to the music of, oh, McDonald had a farm. This little girl picks up a balloon and she tosses it in the air and she starts chasing it around the room and smack dab in the middle of it all is my little Lizzie with pigtails on her head, and she is grinning from ear to ear. It's time for cake. And so we bring out this big sheet cake, and it has pictures of a pig and a cow and a big red barn. And as we're singing happy birthday, Lizzie's eyes grow wide. And my husband, Colin, says, make a wish. And she leans in and Everyone is clapping, and in that moment, Lizzie is a picture of pure joy. It reminded me of a time that I felt pure joy when my friend surprised me on my 30th birthday. My friend Kelly picked me up and drove me to my favorite restaurant. I thought it was just the two of us. So imagine how I feel when I walk in a room and 10 of my favorite friends are sitting around a table. It had been a long week. So much of my life revolved around planning events for other people, making other people happy. And so for people to take time out of their busy schedules for me, I was overwhelmed by the gesture. I mean, they even went to the trouble of finding out my favorite candy and they had Skittles all over the table. Well, by now I'm sure that you have determined that I love a celebration of any kind, which is why I started an event planning business. I think that whether it's a business retreat or a wedding or a birthday, it ought to be special. It's a chance for us to take time out of our busy lives to show someone else that they matter. You can imagine how that impacted me while I was on a plane to visit a friend. I'm 30,000 feet in the air and I'm flipping through this magazine and I come across this image that I will never forget. This little boy is standing in the middle of a dirty street. He has sunken eyes and a bloated belly, and there are people around him, but he looks all alone in this world. No one was noticing him. <sighs> I thought, this little boy will never feel that pure joy that Lizzie felt, that I felt, that you have probably felt when someone noticed your birthday. I thought, somebody has got to do something about this. I'm as much as somebody as anybody. I am going to do something about this. Well, fast forward, and we're in the dining hall of the Family Gateway Shelter here in downtown Dallas, and in walks 10-year-old Micah. He's been at the agency for three months, and at 10 years old, he's already jaded. He's moved multiple times with his family. He's never had the chance to make any real friends. He's suffered disappointment after disappointment. I'll always remember the switch that flipped in him that night when he realized that we were there to celebrate him. We were singing happy birthday to him. The cake was for him. He went from jaded to joy. And I know that that sounds too good to be true, but I was there, I witnessed this. And if you were there, you would have seen this switch happen too. And guess what? Micah wasn't the only one feeling valued and special and important that night. We were celebrating 10 other kids' birthdays. The joy was contagious. So how did this happen? We started the birthday party project. The birthday party project's mission is to bring joy to homeless children through the magic of birthdays. We throw birthday parties for kids ages 1 to 18. To date, we've celebrated over 3,100 birthdays in 12 cities across the country, from Keisha in San Francisco to Mark in Kansas City, Jose in Washington, D.C. Our mission is to make sure that these kids feel joy in a time where they feel all alone and that no one is noticing them. And you know, what I couldn't have anticipated is that after our first party, people were calling and emailing us, asking us to volunteer. Agencies were calling us and asking us if we would come and celebrate their kids. Newspapers started sharing our stories, and the inquiries kept coming. People were dropping off gifts at my doorstep. 
we had to keep adding opportunities to celebrate these children. It truly was a phenomenon. You can see some of our parties, um, how, these, it, how these happen on this video behind me. So you can imagine how I felt one night when I am at a networking event and I'm talking to these guys about, you know, the birthday parties and what we're doing and this guy says to me, okay, so you throw them a birthday party. They still don't have shoes. <laughs> it's like a slap in the face. He said, the minute you leave, they're still at a shelter. You're not helping them out of their situation. <sighs> at the time I was devastated. I went home that night and I was telling my husband what this guy had said. I just couldn't shake the question. Is he right? Is what we're doing just throwing a birthday party? Colin said, Paige, these kids might never feel joy, not for a minute or an hour unless you and our volunteers show them that this is possible. So you can't help them out of their situation, but you can show them this. You can show them that these kids matter. And as he's saying this, I'm picturing these kids in my mind and the moms and dads having fun and the volunteers smiling and I knew that what we were doing mattered to them. It's not about a birthday party. It's about the meaning. It's about the belonging. It's about us initiating. It's kind of like a joy triangle. The birthday party project matters. These kids matter, and we were going to keep doing this. One of the directors of the shelter said to me one time, Paige, do you know what kids crave most? Consistency. Kids crave consistency. In a time when their worlds are turned upside down, when they're experiencing trauma, they crave consistency. So in addition to this joy, we can give them consistency. So in a way, I'm grateful to this guy because he helped us to dig a little deeper. We prove that we can give kids what they need not necessarily a permanent home. We can give them something just as important, lasting moments that make them feel special and valued. So you're probably thinking, well, that's great for the kids and that's great for the volunteers that are finding meaning and that these birthday parties are kind of putting together this joy triangle, but what does that have to do with me? Well, here's my question for you. Who do you know in your life that could use a little joy triangle? Who do you know in your life that might be feeling all alone in this world, that no one is noticing them? Who do you know in your life that has a birthday coming up? I'll tell you what I've learned. After five years and over 350 birthday parties with over 20,000 kids and 9,000 volunteers, I have learned that joy is not something that you sit back and hope that it shows up. No, joy is something that you initiate and you show up for other people. Joy is something that you both give and receive. Joy is contagious. I'm gonna give you just three quick examples of people that represent this joy triangle. So first there's Tanya. She owns a bakery in town and she calls me one day and says, Paige, I wanna start baking cakes for your parties. And I'm like, Tanya, this is amazing, but you seem so busy. She said, you know what? I got into this, I got into this business because I love baking cakes but right now I'm just pushing paperwork. And yes, we, we do um, donate to the community, but none of that has any meaning for me. I see the way the kids' eyes light up when you give them a cake that's just for them. I wanna be a part of this. So Tanya starts baking beautiful cakes for all of our kids. And recently I ran into her and I just kept saying, thank you, Tanya, thank you. And she said, no, 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 Paige, thank you. I feel so much joy when I drop off these cakes. My friend Matt works at a law firm downtown and oftentimes he's the first one in and the last one out. The same security guard greets him in the morning and locks the door behind him every night. And one night the security guard noticed that Matt was working way past his usual time. You see, Matt likes to work a lot because he shares custody of his kids and he doesn't want to be at home alone. Well, when the security guard noticed this, he went across the street and grabbed a cup of coffee, brought it back to Matt and sat it on his desk. And Matt says, I was so surprised by the gesture. I didn't even know that Jeff 
paid any attention to me. And after we started talking, I realized that we had a lot more in common than I thought. You see, for the first time in a long time, Matt felt noticed, all because someone brought him a cup of coffee. Initiating makes all the difference. My friend Allison moved to town not too long ago, and she didn't have very many friends, so she volunteered at one of our birthday parties. And while she was there, she had a great time connecting with all of the kids and the volunteers. She knew this was something that she wanted to do long term. She calls and says, Paige, how can I get more involved? And I said, Allison, be careful what you're asking. Uh, but we're looking for a few leaders to help us at some of our parties, and I'll always cherish what she said. She said, yes, this feels like family. You see, Allison felt a sense of belonging. So how about you? You might be thinking, I work 60 hours a week. I'm on a plane 15 days out of the month. I'm a single mom with two kids. I can't celebrate birthdays. Well, remember my friend Matt's story? Initiating made all of the difference. Every single one of us has someone in our life, and it could be us that could use a little more time and attention, that wants meaning in our life, that wants to be noticed. And the good news is, is that every single one of us has the opportunity to do this today. You don't have to wait for a birthday. If you remember one thing from what we shared here today, I hope that you will remember this. That when we give joy, we receive joy. If you want more meaning in your life, if you want more belonging in your life, if you want more joy in your life, initiate it and you will discover like I did, like Micah did, like Allison did, the power of a joy triangle and how seemingly small things can lead to great joy. Thank you.